So I recently started using the Gwent Tracker tool, and even though the instructions for installing it and setting it up are pretty clear on the website, I've had a few people ask me about it, so I thought I'd go ahead and make a quick video on how to do just that. Uh, this tool is very similar to the Hearthstone deck tracker tool if you're familiar with that. If you are not familiar with the tool, it essentially creates an in-game overlay that displays information about your deck, and this tool also will display cards that your opponent has played if you would like it to do so, and there's a few other interesting things that it does as well. Um, I was kind of originally against using the tool personally because I was afraid I was going to uh, start using it, you know, as a mental crutch, if you will, or get kind of lazy. And truth be told, I, I really wasn't struggling, um, you know, to take in the information that was provided in the games when I was playing. So, um, you know, essentially everything that this tool does could be done with, say, pen and paper if you really wanted to. In fact, uh, one of the common questions that people have are, uh, you know, can I be banned for using this tool? Uh, CD Projekt Red has already come out and said, no, you can't. And, you know, for that exact reason, essentially what it does is the same as, you know, if you had tracked it with pen and paper, it's more of a convenience tool um, than anything else. But uh, after some reflection and, you know, talking with some viewers, for me as a broadcaster and as somebody who, you know, makes video content, uh, the tool is really a big benefit for the audience. So, uh, you know, if people are watching the stream or watching videos, uh, they can e easily see, you know, cards played, uh, cards that I've played, my enemy has played. If they're coming in mid-game, they can kind of catch up on what's happened so far. Um, you know, if they have questions about my deck list, for example, then it's obviously displayed right there on the screen. So... Um, it just provides the viewer with a lot more information, which is ultimately why I decided to start using it. And uh, now that I've, you know, ranted a bit about the program, uh, let's get down to the part you care about, right? Installing and setting up the tool. So uh, you're going to want to go to GwentTracker.com. It's actually Gwent-Tracker.com. I will go ahead and put a link in the description as well so that you can get there. And uh, the process is pretty simple. So... Uh, you're going to come to this page, you're going to right away see a spot where you can download, you'll also see a quick like overview of uh, what it does, and again that whole, uh, can I get banned for using this statement, um, but to go ahead and get started, you want to go ahead and click download. And you're also going to get some quick instructions for how to install here, and depending on the browser, you should either see something down uh, here, or maybe in other areas if you're using something not Google Chrome. Um, I'm in Chrome, so the downloads pop up here down below. And you're going to get a zip file. So I'm going to go ahead and do the show and folder because I'm going to move this zip file to where I want it to be. Um, essentially, we're going to unpack some files. And I like to unpack them exactly where I want them to reside. Now, I personally have a area where I store utility applications that I use all the time. So again, this is where I keep, say, my Hearthstone deck tracker, uh, my key pass, and sometimes some other things as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move the Gwent Tracker zip here, and then we're going to go ahead and unpack it, just like we thought we would. Uh, I use 7-zip. Uh, I'm sure you can use pretty much anything else, but we're going to go ahead and extract here. And voila, now we've got a new folder for Gwent Tracker. And once that's there, you'll see that we've got some additional files. So we're going to go ahead and we can delete the zip file now. And we're going to open up this folder so that we have this at the ready. Because the next step is we're going to launch the Gwent Tracker, but we have to wait until we are signed into the game and at the main menu. So I'm going to go ahead and close out my browser. And we're going to go ahead and launch Gwent. And once Gwent comes up, we will then uh, launch the, the Gwent Tracker. So we get our awesome loading screen. Because CD Projekt Red is awesome. Go ahead and say continue. We want to sign in because we need to be at the main menu. And once we are signed in and here, right, this is the main menu. Uh, you can alt tab. Now, typically I would have this in another monitor, but for right now I'm going to alt tab just so that you guys can see everything that I'm capturing, right? And this is the actual application. You're going to go ahead and just run this while you're at the uh, the menu. 
I'm on Windows 10, I get a little notification, Gwent Tracker is now running. And if I come into the game, uh, I will see now that I have uh, GwentTracker.com, uh, press F1 or click here to open the menu up available. Um, I believe the very first time you install this, you may even get uh, like a pop-up prompt to say, uh, yes, like I want to use the tool. I think it's skipping that for me because I've already installed this in the past. So if you do see uh, some sort of pop-up on uh, your screen in terms of uh, running the injector or you know running the tool, just go ahead and accept it and then you'll get to here. So now that it's installed, we're gonna cover some quick configuration settings and then I'll do like a brief show off of what it does. So uh, again, now that it's running, you can click here or you can press F1 and you'll get a screen that pops up like this. Now, uh, everything that's listed here, these are like decks. Everything over here is deck statistics and you can say to track in casual, track in ranked. Uh, you can reset your statistics if you want to start fresh and so on and so forth. Now, I have some settings already here. These I don't believe are the uh, default settings in fact we'll go ahead and uh, reset everything right so these are actually the default settings right we're going to cover what i set up and then kind of talk about you know why and if you want to change them that's fine so uh show card rarity uh this i want on because this is how i keep track of uh various things in case people again are watching my stream or watching my videos and maybe they want to know more about the deck um, it's not necessarily like a requirement though, but it is something that I keep on. Uh, show base strength. Uh, I highly recommend keeping this on. So if units are getting buffed and you're maybe gonna play Demetrium Bomb, uh, you're maybe gonna play uh, Mardrome, it's not as much in the meta now, but it would have been important in the past. Uh, shackles, things like that. Um, having this on means that you can click on a card in the overlay and see the base strength so that you know exactly what you're going to return that card to. Uh, same as if the card is wounded and you're going to return it to base strength and so forth. Um, show deck statistic. Now, I normally check this off because I can always come into the menu and see my statistics, but I don't personally care to see it displayed. Um, sometimes if we're trying like a spicy brew or something, I might turn it on so that people on stream can see it. But for the most part, I keep that off because it's all here. Uh, show banished cards. If you have this checked, there will be... Um, another overlay that pops up that shows banished cards. Uh, typically in this game, cards are only banished after you've played them. So think of things like uh, Aromancy. Once you play Aromancy, that card's technically banished and then the copy of the other card is now in your grave. Uh, actually, I might have just misspoke. I don't think Aromancy. Uh, First Light um, is also not a card that banishes. What am I thinking of? Is it Renew? Nature's Gift? Nature's Gift. That's the one I'm thinking of. So I'm sorry, guys. Brain fart. Pretend that I didn't just say those things. So, like, Nature's Gift, for example, does banish when you play it, and then it creates another copy of the card that it's copying. Uh, so this would show Nature's Gift in the banished pile. Um, let's say you also, like, manage to actually kill Mork Varg, and he gets banished, right? He would show up in the banished cards, but... Um, those cards are also going to show up in the cards that have been played, right? So the show opponent cards. So personally, I I think this is a redundant field as of right now. Now later on, if they introduce mechanics that let you interact with banished cards, then yeah, you can always turn it back on. But for right now, I keep it off. Uh, group cards. This just kind of groups everything together, so it's nice and neat. So I keep that checked. Uh, show own deck. I have everything showing because I want to see everything in my deck. Show opponent cards. Um, this varies for me. A lot of times I might just have silver and gold because those are the like important cards I want to keep track of. In some matchups I might turn on bronze because let's say against consume monsters for example. Um, they might be playing necker warriors to shove neckers in their deck and it, it could be important to know you know how many neckers they have left uh, so on and so forth. So depending on the matchup sometimes I turn it on and off. Uh, we're going to leave it on for now though. And uh, scale X and Y are in reference to uh, the size of your overlays. I typically just leave these at the default. And then I also turn on automatic updates because, um, you know, it is 
something that is being uh, developed by uh, a Reddit user uh, by the name of Buffy GR. So as people report bugs and stuff, he will push up updates. It's kind of nice to get those automatically. Um, I also personally have it start with Windows so that I don't have to start it when I start the game. And that is my settings. So again, you can kind of set them up whichever way you want. This is the way that I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. And then we're going to go ahead and jump into a game. Now, it will show up in casual games, ranked games. It actually also shows up even in your practice games. So we're going to jump into a practice game just so that you can see the overlay pop up. It does not show up on this loading screen here, but it will show up on the following screen. So now, as you can see, we have... Witchers and Crones is the name of my deck and what's left in it. So this is everything that is not here. So for example, if we look at my overlay here, right? You will notice I don't see Monster Nest. So now if I mulligan Monster Nest, it swaps it out and look, Monster Nest. And it shows my rarity, shows the power level. So these are bronze, these are silver, these are gold cards. Uh, if I click on the actual uh card here it actually mulligans right so just kind of like be aware we're gonna go ahead and just kind of go in i mentioned that because when i was first learning i was trying to click on one of these once and then i mulliganed um so that's that's no es bueno now if i click on it here though right you'll see that i get the preview coming up right so like i can click on vesemir i see the preview right but Again, during the mulligan phase, that interactivity does not happen. So I just wanted to demonstrate that so that uh, you don't make the same mistake I do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the gist of it. This is also why, again, like if you click on it, it'll show uh, card info. So over in the opponent area, right, you'll notice that he's played Barclay Owls. Shows Barclay Owls here. You'll also notice I cannot see any of the other cards in his deck. Again, this does not let you cheat in any way. Um, it just allows you to see cards that have already been played. Again, things that are uh, normal as if you were tracking with pen and paper. Um, last thing I want to show is, again, because we have the base strength thing, if I mouse over this, you'll see in the center of the screen, base strength 8. So if this were buffed, if this were you know debuffed, then I could quickly mouse over it and it'll tell me what the base strength is. And I think that's pretty much the gist of it. Oh, one last thing to cover, I guess. Um, these minus signs do collapse, right? And if you click anywhere on the title, then you can reposition. So like I can move this up here if I want. I can move this right here if I want. Um, same thing with the banished cards if you have them on. So again, I can hit F1 to enter my menu. And let's just go ahead and turn on banished cards. Boom. So we'll see now we have banished, right? And I could move banished around to like here if I wanted. And then similarly, I can come back in and I can turn it off. And I can come in and I can turn it on again and it's still right there. So that is how you customize it. Um, as I said, very straightforward, not very difficult, but I did have a couple people ask, so I thought I would at least throw something up. Um, hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions, you can uh, leave a comment down below uh, or you know, catch me on social media or in the stream anytime. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy using the tool and hopefully I will catch you next time.